Yaswo looked back at the distant inn. The round stitches of stone had sewn the path shut and blocked off any oncoming approach. It had bought them time, but dawn would be coming soon, and with it, more men for them, for him. They knew you. Talia's voice was quiet. Yaswo, she held on to the last word. We need to keep moving. They wanted you dead. Yaswo let out a breath. There are a lot of people who want me dead, he said. And now some will want you dead as well. If it matters, they named a crime I did not commit. I know. Yaswo was not the name he had given on their journey, but it did not matter. She had not asked about his past in the time they travelled together. In truth, she had not asked anything of him except to be taught. She watched her mentor now. It seemed her trust was almost painful to him, perhaps more than if she thought him guilty. He turned and began walking away from her. Where are you going? Sharima is to the west. Confusion rose in her voice. Yaswo did not turn back to face her. My place is not Sharima, and neither is yours, not yet. His words were cool and measured, as if he was steeling himself against a coming storm. You heard the merchants. The lost city has risen. Tales to scare the tradesmen and drive up the price of Shereem and linen, he said. And if a living god walks as sands, you don't know what that means. He will reclaim what he has lost, the people who once served him, the tribes. Talia's voice strained with the emotion of the evening, her words boiling over. She had journeyed so far to protect them and now she was a world away when they needed her. She reached out a hand's breadth from pulling on his arm, anything to make him listen, to make him see. He will enslave my family, her words echoed off the rock around them. I must protect them, don't you understand that? A gust of wind picked up, stirring pebbles on the ground and whipping Yaswo's black hair about his face. Protect, he said, his voice barely a whisper. Does your great weaver not watch over them? The words now came through gritted teeth. The man, her teacher, turned towards his lone student, anger flashing in his dark, haunted eyes, the raw emotion startling her. Your training is unfinished, you risk your life returning to them. She stood her ground and faced him. They are worth my life. The wind swirled around them, but the girl was immovable. Yaswo gave a long sigh and looked back to the east. A hint of light had begun to break the blue-black night. The last of the turbulent gusts calmed. You could come with me, she offered. The hard lines of the man's jaw relaxed. I've heard the desert mead is quite good, he said. A soft breeze tugged at the girl's hair, and then the moment was gone, replaced again by a memory of pain. But I am not finished in Ionia. Talia studied him carefully and reached inside her tunic, breaking a long loose thread. She offered the length of hand spun wall to him. He looked at it suspiciously. It's a tradition of thanks among my people, Talia explained. To give a piece of yourself is to be remembered. The man took the thread gingerly and tied back his wild hair with it. He weighed his next words carefully. Follow this to the next river valley and that river to the sea, he said, gesturing towards a lightly worn deer path. There is a lone fisherwoman there. Tell her you wish to see the Freljord. Give her this. The man withdrew a dried maple seed from a leather pouch at his belt and pressed it into her hand. In the frozen north there are a people that resist noxion rule. With them you might find passage back to your sands. What is this? Freljord, she said, testing the word in her mouth. Ice, he said. Stone, he added with a wink. It was her turn to smile. You will move quickly with the mountains beneath you. Use your power, creation, destruction, embrace it, all of it. Your wings have carried you far, he said. They may even carry you home. Talia stared at the path leading down into the river valley. She hoped her tribe was safe. Perhaps the danger she imagined was just that. If they saw her now, what would they think? Would they recognize her? Babajan said that no matter what color the thread, no matter how thick or thin the draft was, as it was taken up on the spindle, a part of the wall always remained what it had been when it started. Talia remembered, and took comfort in that. I trust you will weave the right balance. Safe journey, little sparrow. 
Talia turned to face her companion, but he was already gone. The only sign he had been there were a few blades of grass that rustled in the morning air. I'm sure the Great Weaver has a plan for you too, she said. Talia took the maple seed carefully into her coat and started down the path into the valley, the stone beneath her boots rising eagerly to greet her. And that's all I've got for you this time around. Let me know what you thought of the series by hitting that like button and leaving your feedback and comments in the section below. Don't forget, all the lore has been covered up to this point, so if you missed anything, I'll leave an annotation in the top of the video and in the description that will take you straight to the lore of League of Legends playlist. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, I'll see you next time.